Msongo wa mawazo ni miongoni mwa magonjwa ya kiakili duniani kote na wathiri zaidi ya watu milioni moja nukta tisa nchini Kenya pekee huku hali ikikadiriwa kuwa mbaya zaidi kutokana na matarajio magumu ya kiuchumi yaliyopo. Ilikuwa zimeenda mbaka around 57 cases na uh, mwaka wa 2021 tukawa tumengangana sana kufanya kazi kuzuia, tukazuia zikaenda chini. This 2022 uh, mwanzo mwanzo wa mwaka huu zilikuwa cases za watu kufikiria kujiua na kujaribu kujiua ama ile kujiua zikawa zinaonyesha dalili za kupanda by suicide uh, we are trying to put it in the right words so it's death by suicide and something that should stop on us stigmatize us say kwa manyamaza muuze ka kupoa kama siki kuongea give them time but uko tu present kwa hiyo surrounding yake that that's one thing show up skiza mtu those are the two simple things but they hold your heart so much Wakati ulimwengu unaadhimisha mwezi wa kuzuia kujiua, waathirika wa afya ya akili ama msongo wa mawazo wameanza safari ya kubadilisha mawazo yanayopelekea watu kujitoa uhai kaunti ya Machakos. Zahra Njoki ni bingwa wa afya ya akili ambaye leo pamoja na vijana wengine wamefanya hafla ya kuendesha baiskeli huko Machakos. Anasema alianza kuwa na mawazo ya kujiua alipokuwa na miaka tisa vita ambavyo anasema havikuwa rahisi. I didn't know that I was mentally ill or unstable because we live in a society where you're told you're not my people you know you you're 9 years old you have tantrums you are having psychotic episodes and automatically you're told you are possessed Njoki katika maisha yake yote amekuwa kipatwa na msongo wa mawazo amekuwa kitembea usiku akiwa usingizini na wakati mwingine huwa na dalili za kichaa ambazo anasema watu walimdhania kuwa amepagawa I was living with a family member uh, a guardian for me and um, they were always beating me up abusing me verbal abuse um, physical abuse and I didn't know that that would really really affect me and you know my will to actually want to live and for the first time there I I say I I just want to I want to die I want to kill myself and I would I would cry myself to sleep every single day I would encounter um, I would have hallucination basically experience hallucination I would sleep walk every night as a kid Sasa yeye ni mtu mzima anayejaribu kufuta maisha yake mabaya ya zamani kwa usaidizi wa marafiki zake ambao anasema wamekuwa kiungo kwake na kutafuta matibabu imekuwa safari bora zaidi mafanikio ya uponyaji kama vile njoki vijana wengi ambao wanaugua ugonjwa wa akili ambao wakati mwingine unaweza kusababisha mtu kuwa na mawazo ya kujiua ni matokeo ya chuki waliofanyiwa zamani so no one basically came through and no one seemed to understand i was such a rebellious kid and Uh, in my teenage years I was always walking around with a packet of uh, what is it called rat rat poison yeah so I would I would always try to overdose on pirinone or any type of medication I would find as a as a child and no one as a teenager basically no one would notice it would go and notice no one seemed to care no one seemed to want to understand that okay and when I was uh, back in 2020 after I was hospitalized it took friends pushing me to go seek help. So basically who came through my friends? Njoki anawashauri wale wanaopata mawazo ya kutaka kujiua wasiogope kutafuta msaada wa haraka. Akisema ni kama hali nyingine yoyote. Sasa yeye ni bingwa wa afya ya akili na anajitahidi kufikia wale wanaojihisi kuwa duni kwa kutumia jukwaa lake la mitandao ya kijamii kuatia moyo. So just be kind to yourself and if you feel that way uh, seek help. There's no shame in asking for help. There's no shame in going to see a therapist, a psychiatrist. There's no shame in that. It's just like any other condition honestly. Itokea tu hivi kuongelesha mtu anaanza hata kulia. Na hiyo ni dalili moja kuonyesha kwamba level ya stress imekuwa juu sana. So wale wote ambao wamekuwa na hiyo level ya stress tu tuko available. 
tunawafungulia milango njooni tuweze kuongelesha tuweze kuwafanyia counseling ama ile inaitwa psychotherapy kuweza kumani jamaa mafikira na kuweza kukupea hiyo inaitwa uh, uwezekano wa kukop ama ku, kukubali na kuendelea na mbele Roda Kithure kutoka Coalition for Action for Preventative Mental Health anahofia kwamba shinikizo la maisha, ukosefu wa kazi, unyanyapaa ni baadhi ya mambo yanayochangia sababu za kujiua nchini Kenya. We are with others we are in partnership with that because many people many cases of people who are dying by suicide is people who feel isolated they are alone they don't have anyone to rely with they don't have anyone to speak with they don't have that family connection is no longer there that community knowing i have i can go talk to someone when i have a problem another thing is decriminalizing suicide so that people can speak up because the more everybody knows it's a criminal offense when i go talk to someone about suicide ideation and even suicide side attempt i know i will end up in jail so that that law needs to be it needs to be criminalized for people to speak up another part is the more conversation we have around mental health the more we talk about and communicate it is okay not to be okay it is okay to speak up when you're feeling you're not okay that's where the conversation is to start at the community even as you are coming also the, the whole of month even as you're going into the month of october is the mental health month so that is why now today is marked as the one of it and also uh, where now right now we we'll go every county Kenyans are speaking about it is because of the rising cases of suicide we have witnessed in the last couple of years. Mwaka 2020 polisi walishughulikia zaidi ya kesi 313 za kujiua ikilinganishwa na kesi 499 na 575 mwaka 2019 mwaka 2020 mtawalia ili kushughulikia swala la kiafya nchini Kenya. Washikadau wanatoa wito ili fikra za kujiua zizingatiwe kama swala kuu la afya ya umma na pia ifahamike kuwa sio mwiko ili kuongeza hamasisho na kuongeza upatikanaji wa matibabu nikiripotia mwanga wa ebru mimi ni ode francis